everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another weekly video of news and information about things going on in DCS world and my opinions on some of those things. And of course, I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog. Hey, I hope you're doing very well and uh, surviving through some chaos going on in the world right now. We talked a little bit about that last week and we won't dwell on it. But yeah, again, just hope you hope you guys are doing well and taking um, time to be safe and make good decisions. Let's talk about the good news and the interesting stuff going on in DCS World because we were quite lucky this week. We got a, a couple of really good things. The first one, of course, was the channel release uh, for the channel uh, map, which has been talked about for a while. Now, it is only available in the open beta version of the game in early access. The good news is it is 20% off. Looks fantastic, as you can see from the pictures here. It covers the southeast of England and northeastern France. Historical airfields we have in there, urban areas, roads and railways, ports and other features. It's going to be, as the Eagle Dynamics team described, the perfect setting for the World War II air uh, war in Europe between 1940 and 1945. Uh, lots of wonderful opportunity to do mass deployments of ground assets and reenact epic air battles and enjoy, enjoy excuse me, ground operations not yet seen in DCS World. Obviously you will need the World War II assets pack as well for some of these things. Uh, so for the World War II fans out there, this will be welcome news. A lot of criticism was thrown at Normandy, which didn't uh, quite live up to expectations based on what I have read in online discussions. Not that the map was necessarily bad or anything like that, but a lot of people were lamenting the fact that we had a Spitfire, but we didn't have a, uh, a British map to really play with it and now we we have those things which is which is cool so let me know what your own experiences are with it uh, it is taking advantage of obviously their new uh, systems and I noticed even though they are they are working on this I noticed a little bit of a slowdown here and there of frame rate now I'm not sure exactly if that was a system issue with something else I had running or what, but just FYI, I'm curious to know if you've had any similar experiences. Again, uh, worth noting, uh, some of these things can be pretty taxing on the system, and I'm just curious to see if that's the case and whether or not uh, there will be some tweaks made in the future. I'm sure they, they will with a brand new uh, module, if you like, of this nature, but again, just curious to see if your own experiences match that. Now, of course, in conjunction with the new map, it would... Uh, would not be remiss, uh, I would be remiss, excuse me, if I didn't mention the P47D Thunderbolt, which is now an, also an early access and also has a 20% discount if you are interested. Uh, a lot of other videos have already gone up, obviously, from other YouTubers. I'm not one of those lucky ones that gets the, the freebie, and even if I had, I wouldn't have had time, unfortunately, to, to fly it, so no big deal. But yeah, let me know if you do own it and what your thoughts are. Obviously, it is nicknamed the Jug. It is a bit of a beast. Uh, first took to the skies in May of 1941, and it was, uh, as Eagle Dynamics described here, a workhorse of the Allied victory. And it weighed nearly twice as much as the British Spitfire, gives you an idea of just how heavy and big this thing was. But as a result of its uh, you know, robust and um, um, general larger size, it could carry a lot more payload for um, air-to-ground operations and carried about half the payload of a B-17 Flying Fortress, which is something uh, you know, quite phenomenal. And obviously, uh, it's no wonder the modern Thunderbolt has been named after it. Uh, popular among pilots, well, it was an astound, uh, has an astounding safety record. Very roomy cockpit. I heard, uh, <laughs> I heard, uh, read something. If Wikipedia is to be believed, there was a quip I saw of apparently British pilots describing that the aircraft was so large that the uh, uh, 47D Thunderbolt pilots could actually run around and hide from the enemy aircraft inside the fuselage. Um, but uh, yeah, safety, a roomy cockpit and good safety record and enhanced visibility. Obviously, it carries that sort of modern bubble cockpit similar to the F-16 that we're familiar with today. The Republic Aviation factories in New York, Indiana and Buffalo assembled about 15,600 units between 1942 and 1945. It's powered by the Pratt & Whitney R2859 double WASP radial engine which enabled the Juggernaut to keep up with the nimble and lightning-fast North American P-51 Mustang. Thunderbolts were sent to Britain and France and even the Soviet Union, where they largely served as interceptor roles. So in the DCS environment, 
obviously again it's designed to work with 2.5.6 and the um, current graphics capabilities of that particular version of the game engine it won't work with uh, pre-existing ones it takes advantage as i said of those uh, latest graphics and texture technologies that the game is uh, using enabling you apparently here to push the limits of your system whilst maintaining good frame rates let me know again like i said with the earlier channel map discussion what you are experiencing if you own this lovely aircraft and like i said before it's also 20 percent off now very long um, analysis here of something that the jet pilots will be more interested in especially the f-18 uh, peeps the aim 120 amram has seen something of an overhaul they have done uh, hundreds of calculations on the computational sorry let me re rephrase that computational computational fluid dynamics research and every missile variant uh, has been uh, given a sweep and our results have enabled us uh, to simulate aerodynamic characteristics with a much higher level of accuracy. In contrast to the old missile dynamics model, the new one includes uh, stability and control characteristics. We have calculated missile mechanical properties such as the center of gravity, moment of inertia before ignition and after burnout. More major updates include revised data for rocket motor performance, ballistics and range, development of a velocity altitude adaptive autopilot frequency response with the addition of deflection acceleration feedback, the construction of the electromechanical fin actuator assembly, which is really interesting, and step response reaction control system, autopilot and a lofted trajectory for long range shots. Whew. So lots of stuff going on there. I will throw up a link for you uh, nerdy geeks who like that mathematical physics stuff uh, much more than I do, mainly because I don't understand any of it. I'm not uh, that way inclined. Uh, obviously, the broad overview of that is we're going to get much more realistic missile behavior presumably from the AMRAM, and I think that is interesting. It's going to be very curious to see how that kind of pans out so let me know what your thoughts are on that and whether or not you have noticed any differences with this particular uh, addition to the game and i think again it's cool obviously realism is what we like uh and uh, it, it helps you know creates that immersive factor and um, there have been some discussions about the realism of missiles and whether or not I'm not sure here too how this is going to affect is it affect the game is it going to be more realistic in terms of um, having a higher kill rate or is it going to mean that the missile is going to be more easily defeated because it you know um, missile defeating techniques are going to be more um, effective in the in the game more realistic so again uh, points of discussion here let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are the radar for the hornet haha -ha. Finally, okay, so big thanks apparently to everyone who participated in the Hornet Roadmap poll. It has helped the team plan the next list of deliverables. I can't even say that, deliverables for 2020. Uh, I will throw up a link. It's going to be long and extensive. Uh, we'll throw that up there. Let's have a look here. Where am I? There we go. My notes. Um, they introduced the first iteration this week of the air to ground radar for the Hornet and the first version models map mode and allows you to search for and designate tar target locations which is really cool and later we'll be, we will be adding other modes like the expand levels ground moving target sea and terrain in the next update we have both air to ground and air to air updates for the Hornet targeting pod and it will include more realistic air to ground tracking modes and FLIR tracking of aerial targets in cooperation with the radar. In this week's update, we explore the inclusion of the in zone launch acceptable region, also known as ISLA, for the JDAM. And this provides additional delivery information and will be tied to the later inclusion of pre planned ISLAs and multiple attack points. There is a video, I will put that in the link for you. There were actually a lot of videos this week, and I even even had real time to look at them properly. Um, just uh, really cool stuff from from Wags and obviously the Eagle Dynamics team. Yeah, 
Let me know what you think. I haven't had a chance to do much with this yet, unfortunately. Hopefully time will permit in the future. I'm hoping to take a couple of days off coming up just with uh, how busy it was last week at work. Alas, alack. So, and then maybe I can get some time. I have, though, a list of things to do from my wife, including rebuilding some stuff in the backyard. However, uh, such is life. All right. I think that'll do for this week. It's been a long week. It's been a busy couple of weeks. And like I said, I hope you guys are all doing very, very well. Let me know what your thoughts are on the uh, Thunderbolt and the new map. And also if you've had a chance to tinker with the F-18. And I need to spend some serious study time with that particular aircraft. I very much am looking forward to uh, that. Oh, and before we go, I did notice that uh, Razbam has been working pretty steadily on the... Uh, MiG-23, and there was some work also with the F-15C's, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, ejection seat as well, and that's that's been um, ongoing, I'm aware of that, and hopefully we're going to see some of these models coming out soon. I was also interested in the Super Tucano project, I know some people have uh, kind of uh, hinted, geez, Rasbam, are you working on too many projects at once? Nevertheless, uh, it's cool to see some different aircraft, and one of the big things people always talk about is that we don't have a lot of red aircraft out there. The MiG-23 Flogger is not, uh, I guess, arguably, of course, it's not one of the more modern aircraft, uh, you know, like the F-16 or certainly the Typhoon that has been hinted by True Grit, but, uh, you know, nevertheless, it's a, it's a good addition to the game and it's something to look forward to. And, of course, the more variety we have, the more spice we have, and that's good for the game. Whew. All right. That'll do. Take care, everybody. Let me know your uh, thoughts and comments about things below, and we'll see you next time. This is Prickly Hedgehog out. Take care, everyone. Carry on flying. <laughs>